Hey everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Race Breakdown Overview. And today's overview, uh, we're going to be going over one of the more uh, traditional races in D&D, the Halfling and its sub-races. Now, when I started playing Dungeons & Dragons back in the middle 1980s, the Halfling was the Halfling. I mean, it was the class and the race all in one, and it was, it was a hybrid character, sort of like the Elf and the Dwarf. And over the the years and over the editions, not only in Dungeons and Dragons but in other games, they've basically separated the hybrid races and classes and made them their own entities. So in fifth edition, you know, you will get to choose a halfling and choose whatever class that you would like to play. So there's no restrictions, you know, anything like that. So the halflings they are they love to explore. You know, they are they are definitely an exploring type of race. They love adventure. They have a strong community. They usually live good lives. They love to blend into a crowd. You know, they love other large cities where humans dwell and the other races, but the, I would probably assume they would prefer to be around humans. Probably the uh probably the most of all of the the humanoids. They're usually always kind and curious, which I mean, hey, they're sort of like a, if you watch The Hobbit, and they have their own traits. Just like every other race, they will have their baseline traits. Now, the halfling is the exception, like the dwarf, the elf, and the gnome, they have sub-races. So, whenever you choose a halfling, you're going to get your baseline features, plus you're going to get to choose, for the halfling, there's two sub-races, the lightfoot and the stout. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the baseline halfling traits now. So whenever you choose the halfling off the bat, you are automatically going to increase your dexterity score by two. That's a really nice bonus. So a halfling would be good maybe like a ranger, or possibly maybe a rogue, or even maybe if you want to go a special unorthodox type of spec, maybe a, a dexterity based fighter, maybe a dexterity based paladin. So the halfling would be a good choice for you on that regard. Now the age of the halflings, they basically reach adulthood at the age of 20 and generally live into the middle of his or her second century. So they can, you know, they can live a pretty pretty long life. Now as I mentioned before, Halflings are usually good. So it says for alignment, most halflings are usually lawful good. And as a rule, they're good hearted and kind and hate to see others in pain and have no tolerance for oppression. They're also very orderly and traditional with a strong sense of community, leaning heavily on their support of the community and the comfort of their old ways. And they're basically traditionalist, which it would make good role play to have this in your game. But don't feel like you're pigeonholed that you have to play lawful good. I mean, D&D gives you the freedom to do whatever you want. You know, just use this as a guideline. If you want to play a neutral halfling, by all means go for it. Even if you want to play an evil halfling, you know, there's no rule saying that you can't play an evil halfling. But just make sure if you play a, a neutral or an evil halfling, just make sure that you follow through with your alignment. Now the size of the halfling, they're about three feet tall, weigh about 40 pounds, and you can toss them really nicely. I mean, uh, <laughs> but their size is small. So it's really nice because you're going to see later on with halfling nimbleness, the small size is really going to be a, a nice little perk for you. Now the base speed is going to be 25 feet. Compared to the other races, they're usually all about 30. So you're going to lose a little bit, but if you take maybe a, a mobile feat, you can definitely make up and overpass the other races. Now you're going to get one of the best traits in the game. This is one of the best traits. This is called Lucky. Now when you roll a 1 on an attack roll, ability check or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. That is really good. Now, lucky is also a feat, but you can only use that three times. You can see the halfling trait here, lucky, has no restriction. This is as many times as you roll ones, you can re-roll that die. 
So there's a chance that you may end up with a one once in a while. That's if you have some serious bad luck with the die and roll double ones. But lucky, definitely one of the most strongest traits in the game. Now you're also going to get brave, which is going to give you advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Well, having the frightened condition. That's really nice. Now, halfling nimbleness, uh, this is going to be this is definitely going to take advantage of your small size. So Halfling Nimbleness allows, allows you to move through the space of any creature that is of a size larger than yours. So if you want to move through the medium creature that is directly in front of you, your Halfling Nimbleness is going to allow you to do so. Normally you cannot move through another creature, but seeing that you're going to be small, you can move right through that medium creature. Really nice. Really nice. And that even goes to, you know, even saying that that would be great to play a rogue, or maybe a dexterity based fighter or paladin or ranger. So the languages for the Halfling you're going to be able to speak, read, and write common and halfling. And the halfling language isn't secret, but halflings are loath to share it with others. But they write, uh, they write a little, but they do love to have a strong oral tradition and speak their stories and words. So, very good. Common, pretty much the, you know, every, every race is going to get common, and then halfling is good. The subrace, we already mentioned those. You're going to be able to choose Lightfoot and Stout. Uh, here are the, the here's the Lightfoot. Now the Lightfoot, when you choose, like I said, when you choose between Lightfoot and Stout, you are going to get to add these other racial features on top of everything that you are already going to get for your baseline. It works the same way as the archetypes and the classes. It's just more flavor to add on to your halfling race. So, as a lightfoot halfling, you can easily hide from notice, even using other people as cover. You're inclined to be affable and get along well with others. In the Forgotten Realms, lightfoot halflings have spread the farthest and are thus the most common variety of halfling. Now, when you choose the Lightfoot Halfling, you are also going to get a plus one to your Charisma Ability Score on top of your deck. So you'll be running plus two decks, plus one Charisma. Really nice. So, another good choice for a Halfling would be a Bard. Those are pretty much your two main stats for a Bard. You're also going to get natural, Naturally Stealthy, which uh, allows you to attempt to hide even when you are obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. So you'll be able to take the hide action uh, as normal, even if you're you know in combat directly in front of this creature. So that is the Lightfoot. Next let's go ahead and take a look at the Stout Halfling. And we've already gone over all of the Halfling traits, so we won't go over those again. Now, the Stout Halfling uh, it's basically you're hardier than average and have some resistance to poison. Some say that stout halflings have dwarven blood in them. In the Forgotten Realms, these halflings are called stronghearts, and they're most common in the south of Faerun. So, along with your plus two dex base halfling, you will also get constitution, a constitution ability score bonus of plus one. So that would really be nice for a rogue or, or any class that you want to take advantage of maybe dexterity and finesse any kind of finesse weapon now you're gonna get stout resilience which is gonna give you advantage on saving throws against poison and if you do not know what advantage is in D&D 5e it's a great mechanic that uh, was borrowed from fourth edition and what advantage is is you roll the dice twice and you take the best result of the two pretty cool mechanic now there's also disadvantage, and disadvantage is where you roll twice and take the lowest. But with Stout Resilience, you will have advantage on all poison-based saving throws. Roll twice, take the best. Now you're also going to get another perk with Stout Resilience, and you will get resistance against all poison damage. So if you don't know what resistance is in D&D 5e, it works like this. When you're resistant, 
you take 50% of the damage and it has to be that type of damage. So seeing that you're resistant with poison damage, say if you get hit by a poison bolt for 30 damage, your resistance, uh, you will only take 15 damage because of the resistance. So that's how it works. So there you go, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the race overview for the Halfling. Please feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoy what you've seen. Also, if you want to play a Halfling or any other character, I have 840 D&D 5e character sheets on my website, tabletopping.net. There will also be a link down below for you. I have every level, every class, every archetype. They're all on nice three-page PDFs. You can download them. Download them to your iPad, to your phone. You can print them out, take them to your game, try them out. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.